Okay guys, in this video we're going to be looking at genetic fingerprinting, we're going to be looking at how it is carried out, the gel electrophoresis, and then we're going to be looking at a gel and comparing bands to try and find their suspects. Now, as part of this video, I got the chance to go to the STEM Outreach Centre at the University of Kingston and actually show you what a gel, what electrophoresis actually looks like. If you want more details about how schools can go and visit that, then they're in the description down below. The majority of DNA found within our cells is made up of variable number tandem repeats. It doesn't code for anything, around 95%. This non-coding DNA is made up from VNTRs. The length of VNTRs and the number of VNTRs present is variable between every individual. Relatives will have similar VNTRs and these can be used in identification. The probability of two individuals having identical VNTRs is very, very low. Meaning we can use them for identifying individuals and for tracing close family members. For genetic fingerprinting, a sample of DNA is amplified with a PCR reaction giving millions of copies of the DNA. Large volumes of DNA can be cut into smaller sections for genetic fingerprinting by restriction endonucleases. The DNA can be labelled with a radioactive tracer or a fluorescent dye. Both of these are methods which can be used to visualise the DNA later on a gel. When you have enough DNA, either by PCR or by cutting up DNA using restriction endonucleases, then you can run it on a gel in a gel electrophoresis and here I was lucky enough to go to the University of Kingston to be able to use their equipment to show you what happens. We have pipettes and our gel tank here. This is where we're going to be putting DNA in the wells here. This is connected up to the lid which is connected to a power pack allowing us to run a current through the gel, allowing the DNA to move through the agarose gel. The sample of DNA is placed into small wells in an agarose gel. You're going to put in roughly 5 to 10 microliters of your sample. A power source is connected and the DNA sample will move through the gel. It will move towards the positive electrode. The DNA samples will separate based on size. The smaller ones will run further through the gel. They will move further. The bands can then be visualised either by UV light, as we've seen here, with a radioactive tracer or with a fluorescent dye. We can then take a picture of that. Once the gel has been run, ECR tank, you can pick it up, you can handle it, and then you can place it in a visualizer to see the bands and then take a photograph. Once that photograph has been taken, then we can do further analysis on the bands, looking for any patterns or measuring it. The bands in the fingerprint in the photograph can be analysed visually for the presence or absence of matching bands. Or they can be measured by distance moved. This can be automated and done by a computer. Doing it with a computer will remove any bias and increase accuracy. 
In forensics, when we have a sample from crime, we can use DNA fingerprinting to answer some questions. One question might be, who committed the crime? Another would be, which suspect's DNA was found at the crime scene? Who committed the crime can't be answered by science alone. It will need to be backed up by other evidence, other factors will need to be taken into account. But we can say if a DNA sample found at the crime scene was that of the suspects. For this one, we have our DNA found at the scene and then all of our suspects along here. And we're going to look at these bands individually and see if the bands found in the sample at the scene were in any of the suspects. So here we can eliminate suspect A, C, E and F because the bands in their DNA were not found in the crime scene sample. Looking at the next band down on the DNA found at the scene, we can then further go through and eliminate A, C, maybe D and H. Using the next band down, we can do the same thing. Again, not A or C, and we know it wasn't D this time, or H. There is a very faint, small band moving further down. This still counts as a band. By now, it looks like only suspect G could have done it, but we will still go through the rest of the bands to confirm. We can see that the DNA sample found at the scene and suspect G match up. So we can say that based on the science, suspect G is the one who left their DNA at the crime scene, but we cannot say without any other evidence whether it is them that committed the crime or not. There are a number of different uses for DNA fingerprinting, like we've just seen in forensic science. Matching DNA found at a crime scene to a suspect or to a close relative of the suspect. In paternity testing, proving who the parents or family members of a person are. In medical diagnosis, it can be used to identify genetic disorders before symptoms show up or it can be used to give information on inherited genetic disorders before the decision on conception takes place. It can be used in animal and plant breeding for the prevention of inbreeding which could lead to an undesirable phenotype or it can be used to identify pairs for breeding. To ensure that a desirable genotype or phenotype is seen in the offspring. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.